RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents transcribed the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, and with Bill, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Folks, this is Phil, and here's a word from RCA Victor. It's better looking in every way. RCA Victor's superb new television console, the Fairfield. Better looking pictures, the brightest, clearest pictures ever. Pictures locked in place with RCA Victor's exclusive eyewitness picture synchronizer. The Fairfield's big screen 17-inch television is RCA Victor million-proof television. Quality proven in more than two million homes. Yes, better looking pictures and a better looking cabinet too. The Fairfield is perfectly beautiful. Its cabinet reflects the craftsmanship, the incomparable skill for which RCA Victor is famous. Every line, every detail of its classic design combined to form the best-looking television console of them all. Yes, the Fairfield is better looking in every way. So stop in at your RCA Victor dealers. See and hear the exciting new Fairfield. You too will discover the RCA Victor Fairfield is better looking in every way. <laughs> Phil Harris is now making a movie at Republic Studios about the Air Force. In the picture, he plays the part of a flying sergeant. Right now, he's on the way home from the studio, accompanied by his stand-in, Frankie. <laughs> Curly, something's bothering me about this picture you're making. Why'd they pick you for the part? <laughs> it's obvious. They needed a romantic he-man for the part, and they had a choice between Gregory Peck and me. So naturally, they chose the better-looking one. Well, now that you laid your egg, tell me. <laughs> tell me, who did you have to pay to get the part? I didn't have to pay nobody. Why should they want Gregory Peck when they can have me? I happen to have a prepared answer for that. <laughs> Gregory has appealed for the dames. I got an appeal for the day. Gregory has deep, smoldering eyes. Nothing. His just smolder. Mine are a couple of red hot coals. <laughs> Why, some mornings they look like a three alarm fire. <laughs> now, what else has the peck got? <laughs> He's got a profile. So what? I got a whole face. <laughs> Friendly, you just can't appreciate me because you're not a woman. They picked me for this picture because they needed a good-looking guy. Now, even you got to admit that I'm good-looking. All right, you're good-looking, you're handsome, you're a doll. But there's one thing I can't understand. What? Why did they pick a homely guy like you? <laughs> Curly, you don't belong in an Air Corps picture. You never liked airplanes, and you're not accustomed to getting up high. What are you talking about? Getting high happens to be my bed. <laughs> talking about flying. Oh, oh. <laughs> so am I. Now, how about that scene we shot today with me at the controls of that B-29? There we were at 10,000 feet, soaring through the blue. Hold it. Dipping and Hold dying. it. Tailspin, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Plane didn't even leave the ground. That was a trick shot, and you know it. Well, it wasn't my fault. I begged them to let me go up and shoot that scene in the air. I was anxious to get up there. Height doesn't bother me at all. Doesn't, huh? No. What happened when they tried to make you look taller in the picture? Well, I don't remember nothing happened. No, of course you don't. When they put the elevator heels on you, you blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been up in a plane and you're afraid to go up. I am not afraid. I'd go up in a plane in a minute if it wasn't for my back. <laughs> What's wrong with your back? Got a yellow streak running down the... <laughs> Oh, Rem
Remley, here's my house. Let's go in. All right. And look, Remley, don't tell my kids I'm afraid to fly. They don't think I'm afraid of anything. And, well, I don't want them to find out that their idol has feet of clay. <laughs> All right, I won't tell them, Clayfoot. Good. <laughs> now stand back while I ring the doorbell. Why are you ringing the bell? Why don't you use your key? Well, Alice and the kids have never seen me in this Air Corps uniform. That's why I wore it home today. I can't wait to see their reaction when they see me in this snazzy uniform. Hiya, Phyllis. Is your mother at home? Yes, sir. Oh, Mommy, there's an old Boy Scout here to see you. <laughs> what do you mean, old Boy Scout? I'm your father. Hey, baby Alice, don't you recognize me? Gee, Daddy, where did you get that uniform? I wore it home from work. Mommy, come quick. Daddy's got a job as a Western Union messenger. <laughs> I What's you... going on in here? Why, Philip, you're wearing an Air Corps uniform. Well, I'm glad somebody recognized it. How do I look in it? Splendid. Oh, Alice, I have wonderful news. Philip's been drafted. I haven't been drafted. <laughs> I just happen to have this... Billy, I... what are you talking about? Oh, Phil, you're in uniform. Yeah, and I ain't been drafted. I knew you wouldn't wait. You've enlisted. What a noble gesture for a man your age. Now, look, Alice, I have... I don't have time to talk now. I have to start knitting you a pair of socks. But, Alice, And I'm... I know you're anxious to return to your post and rejoin your comrades. Look, I... Comrades? <laughs> it ain't bad enough. She got me in the army. She's got me on the wrong side. <laughs> Look, Alice, this is a uniform I wear in the picture. I know it. Come in the house before somebody sees you. What's the idea of wearing that out in the street? Take it off, I Phil. will not. I'll have you know I'm proud to be wearing the uniform of the Grand Army of the Republic Studio. <laughs> Some of the bravest men in history have worn this uniform. Men like John Wayne, Forrest Tucker, <laughs> Ward Bond, Errol Flynn. <laughs> Gabby Hayes. <laughs> I think Daddy looks wonderful in his uniform. Me too. Tell us, Daddy, did anything exciting happen to you at the studio today? Yeah, honey, now that you mentioned it, it really did, yeah. Today I went through a harrowing experience. Worse than what happened yesterday? What happened yesterday? Didn't Daddy tell you? He and his co-pilot were flying at 10,000 feet. When suddenly his co-pilot fell out of the plane. And the fall killed him? No. Fortunately, he was wearing rubber heels. <laughs> <laughs> when he hit the ground, he kept bouncing up and down. And finally, Daddy had to shoot him to keep him from starving to death. <laughs> oh, Phil, how could you? That's an old joke. My father told it to me when I was a little girl. It's not that old. <laughs> you may know it, but this generation hasn't heard it yet. What was the exciting experience you had this morning, Daddy? Yeah, what old joke happened to you today? <laughs> Quiet, Stan, then. <laughs> Girls, I had a hair-raising adventure today. I was up 40,000 feet, cruising around in my B-29, when suddenly my plane burst into flames. Gee, what happened? I bailed out. I fell about 5,000 feet, and suddenly I remembered that I'd left my parachute in the plane. <laughs> what did you do? I went back and got it. <laughs> it ain't safe to be out there without a parachute. <laughs> anyway, I strapped the parachute to my back, and I jumped. I dropped 40,000 feet straight down with nothing to break my fall. Why didn't you open the parachute? Because when I hit the ground, I wanted something soft to land on. <laughs> what kind of a stupid question is that? Weren't you hurt when you hit the ground, Daddy? I never reached the ground. What happened? Well, while I was still 200 feet in the air, the director yelled, Cut! <laughs> that was the end of the scene for today. I don't come down until tomorrow. <laughs> Then I get killed I can't wait until tomorrow All right <laughs> I can't wait either Because it just happens that tomorrow I do my big scene Just before I die 
I sing. <laughs> what a horrible way to go out. <laughs> not horrible. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just picture this. After the crash, I'm lying there in the arms of my commanding officer. <laughs> Francis. Yes. And I sing this song to him. Mm -hmm. Music. <laughs> on the warpath Mama's fighting mad Mama's boiling Yes, Mama's on the warpath Poor Papa, Papa got in bad He's in bad, very bad, awful bad Mama's on that warpath Papa's leaving town Cause he's learned that when Mama's on the warpath It just ain't safe to be around Get away, get away So if he runs away He may live to fight another day before she throws him out You can hear poor Papa yell and shout Take to the hills whenever Mama's on that warpath Papa's laying low Cause he knows that when Mama's on the warpath Poor Papa, Papa better blow Brother blow, better blow, brother blow Mama's on the warpath Mama wears the pants Cause in our house when Mama's on the warpath Poor Papa Pop ain't got a chance Not a chance, not a prayer He's kaput Mama's on the warpath Papa's in a jam And he knows that if Mama's on the warpath He'd better take it on the lamp Better scram on the lamp Poor Papa's got a hunch Mama's saving up her Sunday punch She likes him black and blue so there's only one thing Pop can do Take to the hills whenever Mama's on that warpath Give her lots of room Cause as Pop says when Mama's on the warpath She's really riding on a broom Boom, boom, boom She's a witch on a broom Poor Papa's got a hunch Mama's saving up her Sunday punch She likes him black and blue So there's only one thing Pop can do Take to the hill Whenever Mama's on the warpath Give her lots of room Cause as Pop says when Mama's on the warpath She's really riding on a broom And stay out! Curly, this is the song you sing to your commanding <laughs> officer? <laughs> Gee, Daddy, you must be the best pilot in the world to do all those flying stunts in the picture. Oh, shucks. It ain't nothing that Eddie Rickenbacker or Lindbergh couldn't do. <laughs> I tell you something, though, kids. When it comes to flying, there ain't nothing that your old man can't do. I'm probably the bravest pilot that ever lived, and Daddy, I want... Daddy... Seeing as you're such a good flyer, will you take us up in the plane sometime? Why, of course I'll take you up, because when it comes... Was that the phone rang? <laughs> Dad, will you take us up on the plane? That's what I thought you said. You're not afraid to take us up, are you, Daddy? Who, me afraid? Why, that's... I... Well, we... No, you... what he's trying to say is yes. I am not afraid. If you kids want me to take you up, I'll take you up sometime. Good. We'll go up this afternoon. <laughs> this afternoon? You mean today, this afternoon? <laughs> yeah, this afternoon. The one that comes after this morning and before this night. I know which one. <laughs> Look, kids, I'd love to take you up, but you see, like most flyers, I have a silly little superstition. What superstition? He won't go up in any plane that leaves the ground. <laughs> It's not it at all. Then what is your superstition? I refuse to fly during any week that has a Friday in it. <laughs> Daddy, we want to go for an airplane ride with you this afternoon. Can we please? Please, Daddy. Will you take us up? 
Well, I... Of course he will, kid. Rambling. Now, you girls go up and put your coats on, and your daddy will take you flying. Oh, thank you, Daddy. I knew you'd say yes. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Liver lips lefty's been doing all that. Oh, boy, our daddy's gonna take us flying. Don't go away, Daddy. We'll be back before you can say Jack Robinson. Jack Robinson's too late. The flight's off. <laughs> You can't back out now I promised the kids You're gonna take them flying You can't make a liar out of me Remley Hmm? You got a match? Why? I'm gonna set you on fire <laughs> A plastic seersucker suit you're wearing Should burn pretty good <laughs> What's the idea of telling my kids I'm gonna take them flying? I don't know how to fly a plane You don't have I know a guy who runs a flying school He'll take you on a flight over the city for $10 But the kids expect me to fly it I got that figured out too The pilot will let you sit next to him And the kids will think you're flying a plane Yeah, that might work If the kids don't notice I'm unconscious <laughs> What do you mean unconscious? That's the only way you're going to get me in that plane <laughs> Such a sissy Flying is perfectly safe As long as you have A good plane And a good pilot I'm not afraid Of the pilot Or the plane Well then what are you Afraid of? Nothing The nothing that's Between the plane And the ground <laughs> oh, Curly Why don't you try flying? You might learn to love it I might learn to love Jumping in a thrashing machine too But I ain't gonna try <laughs> I fell in a still once When I was a kid <laughs> Nobody to blame but yourself You started bragging And you'll have to go through with it Besides, it'll teach you To conquer your fear Do you think so? Oh, Phil I think you should go up once There's nothing to be afraid of Tell you what I'll go up with you Would you, Mrs. Mesher Smith? <laughs> of course, I'm not afraid Now, if you'll excuse me I'll put on my blue dress With the built-in parachute And I'll be right back well, that's what's wrong with that blue dress. <laughs> I thought she was starting to spread a mite. <laughs> hey, Curly, you're gonna love flying. You get up about 10,000 feet and you look down and you see the earth. Looks like a small little golf ball and there's nothing between please, you... Please, Remley, will you please? What? Well, I get scared just thinking about it. Gives me the shakes all over. Now, look, Remley, what you've gone and done. Just look at my hands. They're shaking like crazy. Hi, Mr. Harris, I brought... Oh, you got a Marley today, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a Model T trying to get started on a cold morning. Oh, uh, Julius, leave him alone. Mr. Harris is shaking because he's afraid. Oh. And what's bothering old Jelly Spine today? <laughs> Julius, please. I have a good reason of, for being afraid. Mr. Harris, I've been studying psychology and fear is all in the mind. So stop shaking. Usually it can be traced to a lack of security. Just because you're a broken down old man with no talent, <laughs> no ability, and uh, keep shaking. <laughs> hey, the kid's right, Curly. It's all psychological. Sure. Don't you know there's an underlying reason for everything a person does? For example, Mr. Harris, on the surface you appear to be stupid, but underneath there's a very good reason for it. <laughs> there is? Yeah, you ain't got a brain in your head. <laughs> what are you afraid of, anyway? Well, my kids want me to take them up in a plane and, well... I've never been up in one, and I'm afraid. You big sissy. Nothing to flying. It's just a question of getting used to it. It's like eating olives. When you first ate olives, you didn't like them, but you developed a taste for them, didn't you? True. <laughs> Same thing applies to planes. All right, get me a plane that'll float in a martini, and I'll try. <laughs> People who are afraid of flying are the ones who've never been up. 
For example, my uncle was always afraid of planes, so he decided to conquer his fear the hard way. He went up in a plane with an open cockpit, and they didn't wear a safety belt or nothing. Well, did that conquer his fear? I don't know. We haven't been able to get through to him at the seance yet. <laughs> Are you sure? Positive. Well, I gotta run along now. Have a nice flight. Uh, uh, there's one thing you can do for me. What? You see my uncle, tell him to get in touch with us. <laughs> get out of here, will you? <laughs> now look, Frankie, well, I... Well, Bill, the children and I are ready to go. Let's go to the airport, huh? Look, Alice, I've been thinking there really isn't any reason why I should go up. Curly, please set your mind at ease. My friend is a good flyer and he's got great planes, so let's get out to the airport. Hey, Alice, you and the kids wait in the car while Frankie and I make the arrangements for a flight. Well, Phil, you'd better check on the planes and pilots and be sure they're safe. No, you got nothing to worry about, Alice. Come on, Curly. Hey, now, wait a minute, Remley. Alice is right. Are you sure this is a good flying school? It's the best. It's run by an old friend of mine, Ace Berger. He's a famous flyer. What's he famous for? He's the one who plotted the course for Wrong Way Corrigan. <laughs> Oh, I can see we're incapable hands. We're all right. Oh, Curly, he don't fly himself anymore. He has very skilled pilots, and his planes are the best. What kinds do he use? PBYXTs. Oh, Pibix. <laughs> Great aircraft. That's fine. Now, look, Frankie, I'm going up for the first time, and I want to make sure that this flying school has the best planes and the best pilots. You have come to the right place, Harris. Sure! <laughs> My name ain't Schultz. I know, but I'm tired of saying Grogan! <laughs> Grogan, what are you doing here? What happened to Ace? He isn't here anymore. I bought him out. Well, Ace wouldn't sell this place. He's making a lot of money here. Yeah, I know. I had a little trouble with him. I made him a good offer and he refused to sell me. So I did the next best thing. What? I bought it from his widow. <laughs> Now, tell me, which one of you guys wants to take the flying lessons? No, we don't want any flying lessons. You see, we wanted to go up for a flight, but now I don't think I will. What's the matter? You chicken or something? <laughs> no, I'm not chicken, but I'm, I'm a little afraid, and I just want to make sure I get a good pilot. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Harris. If that is what's bothering you, your worries are over, because I will take you up personally. <laughs> now, what do you say? Let's try drop dead for size. <laughs> Look, I ain't going up with you. All right, all right. I'll let you go up with my, my best pilot. Bail out Brannigan. <laughs> Bail out? Yeah, yeah. He never learned how to land the plane. It's the only way he can come down. <laughs> See what I've been telling you, Curly? You got nothing to worry about. No, of course not. Our planes are foolproof. They're the latest thing. Now, you take, you take this plane right here. Now, this is a masterpiece of aeronautical engineering. See, I built this myself. <laughs> it has got a streamlined fuselage. It has got four motors and three wings. <laughs> three wings? Yeah. In case one falls off, you're gonna have a spill. <laughs> Why should a wing fall off? You can't depend on the glue they make these days. Logan, I don't like to ask stupid questions, but why you got your laundry hanging on them wings? That ain't laundry. It's a special safety gadget I installed. I put a suit of long underwear on each wing. Uh, you mind if I figure this one out for myself? <laughs> oh, I got it. Hey, in the winter, the long underwear keeps the wings from icing up. Uh, very good. <laughs> that is only one of their functions. <laughs> they are really there to slow the plane down. The long underwear slows the plane down? 
Sure. When you come in for a landing, you, you just, just let, let down, down the, the flap. <laughs> think this is my day for flying. So if you'll excuse me, I think I'll flap Come home. back here. I am going to prove to you that this is a great plane. Now look, kid, the most important part of a plane is a motor, and this is the best motor that is made. Now I just want you to listen to this. While I turn the switch on, you go ahead, you start turning the propeller there. Okay. Switch on. Switch on. Contact. Contact. Atta boy, Harris, you're doing great. Oh, just listen to that motor hum. <laughs> what hum? Nothing's happening. How long do I have to keep turning this propeller? Until the rubber band winds up. <laughs> well, it's been nice visiting with you, Grogan. You've been a splendid host. And if you ever happen to go past my house, I'll appreciate it. Now. <laughs> Look, Remley, let's don't lose any more time around here. I know just a place to go to take the kids up. Come with me. Well, kids, I told you I'd take you up, and I did. But gee whiz, it's kind of good to be back on the old solid ground again. Were you kids scared when you were up there? No. no. Were you, Daddy? Of course not. Hey, pilot, help me unfasten my safety belt and parachute, will you? Okay. You know something, bud? What? You're the first person who ever asked for a parachute when he went up on my Ferris wheel. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. It's the latest, the greatest star-studded collection of music ever brought together under one title. It's RCA Victor's 50 all-time greats. Here's your choice of any or all of the outstanding hits, past and present, popular and classical. The greatest selling titles of them all. Sung, played, and conducted by some of the world's finest artists. And only RCA Victor could bring you such a superb collection of music. Here's a sample of RCA Victor's 50 all-time greats. Fats Waller's inimitable rendition of I'm Gonna Sit Right Down and Write Myself a Letter. Leopold Stokowski conducting his symphony orchestra in the Blue Danube Waltz. E. Turby playing Claire de Lune. And Vaughn Monroe singing There, I've Said It Again. Yes, this is the collection for you. 50 all-time greats recorded at 78 and 45 RPM on RCA Victor Red Seal and popular single records. 50 all-time greats. RCA Victor's collection of songs and stars. Buy these recordings singly, or better still, buy them all. Buy them at your RCA Victor dealer. This is Phil again. I want to say congratulations to a great guy, Walter O'Keefe of Double or Nothing, who celebrates his 21st anniversary on radio starting this week. So make it a date for a lot of fun and tune in Walter O'Keefe and Double or Nothing starting Friday, May the 25th, for a full week. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This program was produced, transcribed by Paul Phillips. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or records, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.